This episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. SpaceX Starship Updates and Starship Mass Production Update. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates. We could be closer to an actual Starship flight than we've ever been before. Starship serial number 3 is the most complete prototype yet, and today we'll look at why that is and what milestones have been achieved so far. Late last week, SpaceX rolled their Starship serial number 2 back from the launch site to the shipyard. Its major change compared to serial number 1? A badly designed triangular thrust puck got replaced with a very different solution. At the Satellite Conference 2020, Elon Musk stated to have been rather upset about the fact that no one had checked this design flaw and reported it to him. Fast testing sometimes means that things are overlooked. Building a whole tank section though just to make it blow up on the test stands can't be a good practice and Musk doesn't want this. He said that SpaceX engineers should treat test articles as if they were their own babies. Only test if you can make absolutely sure nothing bad happens to the baby. SpaceX by now has quite the history when it comes to blown tanks and even whole tank sections. This is due to multiple reasons. One of the biggest issues being weld quality. But it seems like there are new reasons every time. Musk and his team seem to be eager over and over again to get out that next test as fast as possible. Even though it's very different than what you can normally observe when rockets are developed, it seems to be a very fast way of finding new ways. And new ideas and concepts are of essence when it comes to the idea behind Starship. Its purpose is very different than what we've seen so far and this requires a very different rocket. Extremely fast to build, as cheap as humanly possible, fully reusable and with a turnaround time of a few hours. In fact, SpaceX has stated multiple times now that the end goal is to fly each Starship three times per day and around 100 times per year. Each time with 100 tons of payload. Launch, land, refuel and fly again. That's the goal and SpaceX is working 24-7 on finding the solution. Serial number 3 is being built right now and again due to the segment approach it is hard to track the process. Here you can see the Boca Chica workers assemble a new thrust section for the next Starship prototype. This section has seen a lot of change since the last attempt. The whole lower bulkhead has seen major redesigns. Rings have been added on the outside. The thrust puck has been changed from a cone-shaped structure to a flat ring. This most likely will change as well how the engines are mounted on the bottom of serial number 3. All this was done as a reaction to the last big explosion that serial number 1 went through. And do you know what this is? It's hard to tell from this angle. How about this one? We've had this before. On the Starship that many thought would fly. It's the famous Tesla batteries again. Presumably 100 kilowatt versions and as it seems in stacks of two. These are needed to move the fins on top and on the bottom of Starship prototypes and last time they were mounted in the nose cone. These have been installed in serial number 3 and that can only mean one thing. SpaceX might intend to put fins on it. As seen on the last episode, Musk plans to do a static fire and short flights with serial number 3 and longer flights with serial number 4. If this plan works, we will finally see a flying starship. Everything right now points to SpaceX wanting to actually test fly this next starship prototype. Systems are being integrated into the top of the new tank and into the thrust section. Plumbing is being installed as well. It will be interesting to see in the coming days if SpaceX again puts so much hardware on the outside or if they will try to fit more on the inside as it should be. Longer flights with serial number 4 won't be possible if most of the onboard systems are sitting on the outside of the hull. So it would be logical to get these parts integrated into the inside structure as soon as possible. Another possible indicator for flight preparations could be good old Starhopper. SpaceX said last year that Starhopper would be used for Raptor engine tests in the future. When I visited Boca Chica last week, Starhopper did not look like this at all. The ground under it has been cleared and these mounts have been installed. It's hard to tell what those are. They could also be disco lights for a Starhopper rave cave, but it's safe to say that SpaceX is planning something for it. 
On Monday's Starlink livestream, which ended in a launch abort, SpaceX even showed a small Starship commercial. They showed some pictures of internal work and they advertised job openings in Boca Chica. SpaceX still is looking actively for more workforce. If you're an engineer or have any other occupation SpaceX might need and you want to work on a groundbreaking space industry project, get your applications ready and apply. Chances are good you'll be on one of my episodes in the future. Now let's have a look at the progress done on serial number 3 so far. As said in the beginning, due to the segment approach it is really hard to tell the progress we're currently at and we don't want to wait until stacking to see where we're at right now. So this is an updated schematic of the SpaceX Starship done by Rafael Adami aka Fael097. Thank you for the awesome job, you rock! Let's have a look at what parts of serial number 3 we've already spotted in the wild. Obviously a new thrust section has been made and it is already far along, so here is where that will go. Two rings under it are missing, but they've already been spotted, so we can add them too. The four rings building the rest of the oxygen tank have been spotted as well, so here we go. The lower part of the methane tank is almost done and it will go here. The upper part is almost done as well. This already finishes the tank section again. That's what I mean with progress is hard to track. Serial number 3's tank section is already sitting there, just not stacked. On we go with the nose cone. We already have another stack of four rings done and ready. This will most likely go here. We have the lowest ring segment of the cone which would go here and finally we already have the built nose cone which would go here. That's it. It's almost done, just not stacked yet. If my calculation is correct we're just missing one ring segment and there are plenty laying around already. Stacking can commence. SpaceX is getting faster and faster with these prototypes. Impressive. And that stacking of course most likely will be done in the newly finished high bay. Another huge improvement in the process making final systems integration much easier. Many were wondering why SpaceX did not implement a crane into the high bay and I agree. It might have made things easier. At least SpaceX has implemented a wall lift by now making access to different parts of the stack possible without scissor lifts or cherry pickers. SpaceX has also been busy erecting the new tent. Since Monday's episode they've almost built the inner structure and should soon start on the cover. More space for Starship builds and possibly even faster build times for serial number 4 which is already around the corner as we've already spotted yet another nose cone being made. So serial number 3 is almost ready for stacking with most of the parts already being manufactured and the infrastructure developing further and further. SpaceX's speed is insane and there is a reason for it. Starship Mass Production Update It took SpaceX from last April to November to build Mark 1. It took them only 4 weeks to build serial number 1 and it took them only 1 week to build serial number 2 and put it on the test stand. It's not quite 2 Starships per week yet, but the pace at which SpaceX is pushing these prototypes out the door is pretty crazy already. As Musk recently said, production is at least 1000% harder than making one of something. Creating the assembly line that is capable of producing two starships per week is a monumental task but also the ultimate goal. Anything less fast would not be quick enough to reach the goal of 1000 starships and ultimately the goal of colonizing Mars with them. Musk has stated a few times in the past that he believes that humanity only has a certain window of opportunity to become multi-planetary. He also knows that at some point money from SpaceX could run dry and he does not know when all this will occur. That is the main reason why he wants to get through with his Starship project as quick as possible. At a recent meeting in Boca Chica he asked his engineers why they were so slow. Why tanks were sitting around not being stacked and why bulkhead parts already delivered were not welded together yet. Even though speed seems at a crazy level in Boca Chica, Musk does not seem to be happy about the progress made. The response made by his engineers was exactly what I talked about on one of my recent episodes. If you want a manufacturing line, you need specialized workers. Workers who are specialized in a single task as in the automotive industry. Parts move through different stations in the large tents and eventually emerge as finished segments to be stacked. This takes lots of workers though, as you can't easily switch them around anymore. 
And this explains SpaceX's recent career day and even the ad run on the latest Starlink launch livecast. SpaceX needs more workers in Boca Chica to achieve Musk's timeline and goals. As a response to Musk's speech, SpaceX held three recruitment gatherings and added another 252 employees to their payroll, doubling the workforce again. Muskville is growing and he already said that he wants 3,000 workers by the end of the year. And Brownsville, Texas is getting ready as well. They have started construction on a new airport to accommodate the increase in traffic. I've seen it when I arrived on my plane. The new airport will get a brand new terminal and all of this would not be needed if SpaceX would not become a major infrastructure contributor in the area. Cameron County is getting ready for something that has not been seen yet. Mass-produced orbital rockets. And there's new information on a timeline as well. Musk said in a recent interview with Ars Technica that right now SpaceX is planning to have a 20km test flight later this spring. In my prediction that would be serial number 4, as serial number 3 will do static fires and a short hop. And SpaceX is still planning to have an orbital flight by the end of the year. Maybe even with serial number 5 or 6. Musk will have to wait for test results, with serial number 3 and 4 though to get more confidence needed to send a Starship into orbit on top of a super heavy booster. So if Starship serial number 3 and 4 will finally perform the way SpaceX wants them to, the next logical step would be to start with a booster. All these are milestones we most likely will see this year. A lot of confidence is needed when you want to rely on something. This does not only go for mass-produced starships, but also for our daily security needs. And if you want to have confidence in something, trusting in an established partner is the best thing to do. Today's sponsor Surfshark VPN brings exactly that. A proven and refined system to keep you safe and anonymous when wandering in the online world. Data and identity theft, traceability and intrusive advertisements sadly are part of the modern internet and it's a thriving place for home office criminals. Convenient, right? Surfshark VPN helps you to get rid of those people by blocking the most important door. Your IP address. If the path to your PC is blocked, all of these things become a lot harder. One benefit, for example, of changing your virtual location is to get rid of geo-blocking. Just turn on your Surfshark VPN client, refresh your favorite streaming platform and you get access to the whole library. Not just the one available in your own country. I use Surfshark every day. It automatically starts up when I start up my PC and whenever I need it, I just activate it with one click. Use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free and at the same time support what about it. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risk. Surf with your own rules. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Is SpaceX on track with their Starship development and is there anything you would change if you were Elon Musk? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the Patron Shoutout. This is where I thank my patrons for all the help, the ideas and the support they give on a daily basis. They keep the channel alive, provide new insights and they are the core of the community on the Discord server. Without them, what about it wouldn't be the same and my job would be much harder. So show some love for them on the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as always, there are new members on the Team Y Army. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Joseph Gates, Boas Rosanan, Samuel Gell, Timothy C. Loomis and many, many more. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Starships, but also for our daily life re re security needs. <laughs> Ever been before. And today, no. <laughs> it automatically see where we are at. There's a reason for it. Tint, 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 tint.
in the future.